Good morning, everybody. Happy Father's Day once again to all you guys. And uh, I'm thankful to be a dad. Been a dad for 37 years and counting. So uh, I appreciate the opportunity to be a dad. And uh, uh, I just thank the Lord each and every day for what he, what he does for me. Uh, he gives me the the health and strength that I need to be able to do things, and uh, and uh, I just can't, I just cannot, I just cannot out pre- uh, thank the Lord for what He has done in our life. And uh, if you have your Bibles, which I know you do, let's turn to the Book of Gospel of John, chapter eleven, first, and. Uh, and we're going to be talking about how to deal with grief. And God gives God's word gives us a great example when it comes to sickness, death, and the grief that that goes with it. He gives us a good example here in with his dear friends Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. And uh, I don't know if everyone has experienced. A death in the family, whether it be a mom, a dad, brother, sister, cousin, aunt, uncle, and uh, it's always hard when you lose a loved one, especially if you if you known them for a, a very long time. And uh, I'll never forget the day that when my mom passed away, and uh, I was in the backyard and I was just having my thoughts to myself. And uh, I realized at that particular time that I was alone, I was by myself. I didn't have my mom to go to. I didn't have my dad to go to. And uh, so it was, it was left up to me. And uh, it gave me, uh, the Lord gave me an understanding. He said, well, he said, if you just rely upon me, if you trust in me, I'll be, I'll be there with you. Uh, his word says, that he will never leave us nor forsake us. His word is there to comfort us wherever it be with grief, with uh, sickness or health. And, uh, and especially when we talk about here in the book of La- uh, uh, Gospel of John, we'll read in verse 1 of chapter 11. It says, Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and his sister, and her sister, Martha, it was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that he said, The sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her, and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Then after that, he saith he to his disciples, Let us go into Judea again. The disciples said unto him, Master, the, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and goest thou thither again. Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in a day? If any man walk in a day, he stumbleth not. He seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth because there is no light in him. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you again for your word. We thank you for the things that we've been teaching over the last couple of weeks and more months and uh, and some things about how to deal with worry, how to deal with fear, and and Lord, as we talk today about how to deal, deal with grief, and uh, we just ask you, Lord, that you just give us a word from from which you've given us, and Lord, that we'll be careful to give you all the honor and glory for that. Be with all the prayer requests. They were mentioned, Lord, and we just ask these things in your name. Amen. Okay. It's, a, it's hard, like I say, it's always hard when you have a loved one pass away. And, uh, and necessarily, it, it may not be like your immediate family. It, may, uh, it might be a real close friend of yours, 
uh, and uh, things like that. And uh, but it's hard. It, it, it's hard when you lose that 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 person that you you've known for a long time, and especially with your mom and, and your dad. As y'all know, I I never knew who my real mom and dad was and so I was adopted and so the times that we were raised up and growing up and and uh, the, the times when they passed away it was it was very hard on on, on me and my family and uh, of all of us see it was uh, my twin brother Terry and it was my oldest brother Gene and and it's kind of unique in a way that my my family we, we were the last ones to see both of them alive and uh, I thought that was uh, unique and uh, be able to do that I'll never forget I, I don't I don't regret the time that that I had with them and uh, they raised me in the, in the right way used the right uh, I mean they used the, the right way to uh, deal with uh, punishment and things like that to go good old-fashioned way and there there was times where it, it was painful but uh, I, I'm here today and uh, I can't thank enough for that but as we look in our lesson this morning we see in in uh, John chapter 11 the story about Lazarus and we see that uh, first one says now a certain man was sick named Lazarus. So the Word of God is partaking a particular instance here about a certain individual, and it was Lazarus. And uh, we see here uh, in verse 2, it was that Mary, which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold whom he Thou lovest to sing. When Jesus heard that, he said, The sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now, Jesus loved Martha and, and her sister and Lazarus. But the thing about it was, it was here in verse number four, he said, This sickness is not unto death. And uh, he was seriously sick. They were really, really greatly concerned. And, uh, and the thing that I think about today is COVID-19 and, uh, and how devastating that has been. But the Lord is there to, to help us. And uh, we see that the Lord uses many things for his honor and glory through us. And we need to be willing to serve him in the best of our abilities each and every day. But we see here that the call for Jesus came. He said, he whom thou lovest is sick. And Jesus said, it is not unto death. But what is it for? It is for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified therewith. And there's a lot of things that sometimes we may not understand, that we may not be going through, or that we're going through, and we can't understand why well, God, what are you doing? And uh, I'll never forget the day that uh, I was having trouble physically about, let's see, 20, 26 years ago. I was having trouble where I was uh, having shortness of breath. And uh, I, I should have realized something when I was cutting my grass. I, was, I would cut it with a push mower. And my grass, I got a pretty good sized yard, and if I push it at, you know, steady pace, it'd take me two hours to cut it. But then uh, right before I found out what was going on, it would take me two hours, ten minutes, five minutes, two hours, ten minutes. I mean, as each way we progressed, it was taking me longer and longer. I would go from here to the door, and I would have to stop and get my breath. And I thought, well, man, I'm just out of shape. I just need to go uh, start, you know, exercising more and everything. And through the encouragement of my family and uh, Keith and Lindy, they, they gave me the opportunity to go to see their doctor. And uh, they, they did a physical. 
And he did a chest x-ray. And when he came with everything, he said, everything is good except for one thing. <laughs> and he said it had to be a John Deere. <laughs> and, and that's what I've got. I've had it for... I've had it for a long yet time now, <laughs> but uh, I love the John Deere. Uh, I love the color and everything like that. And uh, but he said, "You said he said your heart's enlarged." And uh, he said, "I advise you to go see a cardiologist." And uh, I'll never forget. I came up here, and she and, and Vicky was teaching, and I got her out of the classroom, and I told her, I said, I said. My heart's enlarged, and uh, and so I had a appointment between that time and seeing the cardiologist was about nine days, and in between that time, I was uh, I was containing fluid. My legs were going like that. I mean, I mean they were about that diameter, and uh, and it got to a point where when I would eat. I would throw it up, or I didn't want to eat. And everybody knows if I, if I don't want to eat, something's wrong with me anyway. And uh, but I did not know, but I was having congestive heart failure, and uh, I did a good job of hiding it from hiding it from everybody. Nobody knew except the time we went. But the, we find out. They said, "Well, you got one or two choices. You either." have an operation or you can die. And so 26 years later, still had the only one, hopefully it'd be the only operation I'll have, but, uh, but the Lord knows what, what things are about. But he was there and he's still there. He's given me the health and strength and uh, everything is done for his honor and glory. Because about the last four or five times that I've gone to see a cardiologist, he keeps th saying to me, he said, you're amazing. He said, I don't know how you're doing it. And uh, he said, Gee, you're doing so good. And he said, well, I said, well, it's not me. It's the Lord. He said, he had the opportunity to be able to witness for him. But he said in verse 4, uh, he said, it is, sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified thereby. And so the things that we need to remember, the main thing is for the glory of God. It's not for us, and that he uses us. And we see in verse number 6, and, uh, when he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. There's no urgency of time with God. Jesus deliberately stayed there for two days knowing, you know, everything's going to be good. I know what I'm doing. Uh, it's, it's going to be for the glory of God. And uh, even though we as humans, we're thinking, well, Lord, uh, he was sick. You needed to be here a couple of days before that. But we see that he left in verse 7. He says, uh, then after that, saith he to his disciples, let us go into Judea again. And, uh, but what did the disciples do? Start doing after he told them that, that he was going. He said, uh, Lord, in verse 8, he says, disciples say unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and goest thou thither again? He said, you don't need to go outside. He said, They're, they might stone you, they might kill you. And, uh, but Jesus went anyway. He said in verse 9, he said, Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in a day? If any man walk in a day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. And as you all know, that it is the difference between night and day when you're walking, when you have light or you, or, or you don't. Uh, this past week at work, we, we, we've had, uh, I work with the hydrants with the city of Raleigh, and there are some hydrants that you cannot get literally during the day because when, you, when the shoulder of the road is only about literally that wide, 
and your truck is this wide, and then you've got uh, real high traffic roads in Raleigh like Lynn Road, Lead Mine Road, and all that, you have to do them at night. And so uh, you're talking about a, a week, I would go in at 7.30 at night and, come and quit at 6.30 in the morning. Totally disrupted my sleep habits. I, I might be asleep now and, and, and speaking. I, I might be dreaming and stuff. Pinterest. <laughs> I don't want to do that. That would hurt. But, uh, but there was, uh, I remember one day, uh, it was a couple of day, nights ago, and I was off of Lead Mine Road. Only light around was the stop sign. Stop light. The stop sign don't have a light. That's right. Stop light does have a light, okay? And, uh, but anyway, I was there. I had my truck. I had my uh, flashers on and everything. Had my cones out, so if I got hit, I was, I was covered. It wouldn't be my fault and, uh, and things like that. But still, I don't want to get hurt. And, uh, but they gave us a thing. They, I don't know how long it's been invented, but it was a thing where it, it had on top of my head, had a, had a uh, headlight on it. And so it's kind of like a coal miner type thing. And so here I am, I'm in the wood, literally in the, in the woods looking for a hydrant. And, uh, and my wife and, and my daughter were afraid that, you know, because the way this world is, you don't know if somebody's going to come up and, uh, you know, attack you or whatever. But they don't know who they're messing with. And uh, I'm, I'm certified. My, my hands are certified with the FBI as lethal weapons. Maybe I not say this, but <laughs> but um, no. But the Lord protected me, and if I didn't have that light, I would have never been able to see the uh, the hydrants, especially that late at night. And praise the Lord. Uh, I don't know if I've got to do it any more. Hopefully, I don't. And the thing about it was. I volunteered for it, so it's, that's that's on me. But I'll learn from that mistake. And uh, but he said, uh, first ten says, but a man walking at night, he stumbled because there is no light in him. And so in C in verse twelve, then his disciples said, Lord, or verse eleven says, these things said he, and after that he saith unto them, our friend Lazarus sleepeth. But I go and that I may awake him out of sleep. And we all know right there is when it's talking about sleep, he's talking that he's, uh, he, that, you know, he's not alive. Then verse 12, Then said the disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. Howbeit, Jesus spake of his death, but they thought that he had spoken of taking a rest and sleep. And so uh, we see the Bible tells us about there. And then said Jesus unto them plainly, I mean, you can't be no more blunt than that. He said, Lazarus dead. He's dead. Uh, um, he's not asleep. And so uh, we see here that that's, it's, uh, but like I said, his sickness is unto that, but it is for the glory of God. And, uh, but G, uh, Lazarus did die. Now, he wasn't one of these things where he passed out or anything. I mean, he was literally dead and, uh, and so forth. But we see in verse 15, he says, I am glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent ye may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. So that's the reason why they had to know that, that Lazarus was literally dead because of what, what Jesus was going to do. And we all know what death is because we're all going to die one day unless Jesus comes back and takes the rapture of the church home for that very thing. Uh, for, we shall all die for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ the Lord. That's found in the book of Romans chapter 6, verse 23. And let's turn to our Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 5. 15, 
1 Corinthians chapter 15. And this is these are some of my favorite verses uh, in, in all the Word of God. And, you know, because uh, we're all going to die, but unless Jesus comes back to glory. He said in verse 51 of chapter 1 Corinthians 15, 51, says, Behold, or let's look, uh, go back up in verse 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We should not all sleep. We shall all be changed. And in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. Verse 54. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And if so be that we do face death, in our lives, we know that's not going to be the end. We know that we're going to still be alive and that we'll be in heaven for forever and ever. And you know, a lot of people say today, well, what if you're wrong in what you're living for? What if you're wrong that there is no heaven or there is no hell and, and so forth? Well, what if I'm right? And, uh, and if I am wrong, then... I've lived the best possible life that I could do here on, on this earth. But we see that death is not going to hold us down. Uh, let's see. I was going to think of that song. Uh, oh, we, we, the, I think the name of the song, We Shall Rise Again. And uh, that just kept in my, in, in my mind all, all this week. I'm not going to try to attempt to sing it this morning and run you guys out of here. <laughs> okay. Uh, you, want, you don't want to be grieved. Okay, I understand that. Okay. Uh, but we see that death is not going to get, we're, uh, we're going to have victory over death, hell, and the grave only because of what God has done in our lives and because he is the great God. And, and it's for his honor and glory. And we see in uh, verse uh, 19, or let's, uh, verse 15, uh, after Jesus has just said, Lazarus is dead, he says, I'm glad for your sakes that I was not there to the tent. You may believe, nevertheless, let us go unto him. Then said Thomas, which is called Dicamus, unto his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. And then when Jesus came, he found that he had lain in the grave four days already. So he's already been in the grave four days. And uh, so the, the guy is dead. And, uh, and so, but we see that this is going to be for his honor and glory. And uh, verse 18, Now Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem about 15 furlongs off, and I did a little bit of study on that. And uh, so they went a distance of 1.87 miles. And uh, you know, because of one furlong is equals to 660 feet. And uh, when you times that times 15, and that gives you uh, almost about two miles. So that they had to travel. Now you got to realize. Now they just didn't get in the pickup. They didn't get in the van. Uh, they either had to walk or they had to use a donkey or whatever uh, and stuff. So they had a, they had a ways to go. And uh, verse 19 it says that many Jews came to Mary and Martha to comfort them concerning their brother, and that's that's natural. 
When somebody loses a loved one or friend, uh, you go for, to comfort the family. You go to comfort the friends. And uh, we see in first. Uh, 20 says, Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him, but Mary sat still in the house. And then said Mary, Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. And uh, in essence, she was saying, Well, where you been? You knew what was going on. Why didn't you come? And would we have said the same thing? I think we would have. Uh, being in the flesh and things like that. But if you'd have been here, my brother would have been healed. And God can heal, that's true. But sometimes he chooses death. And that's why he did it at this occasion. It was because what? It was for the glory of God. God was going to get glorified. And uh, so we see that Mary just sat still there and, uh, and listening. And sometimes the, she sat still and waited. Sometimes it's hard to wait on the Lord for things. Whether it be, it could be physical, mental, and uh, spiritually. It could be financially. It can do, be all these things. But sometimes it's hard uh, to wait on the Lord. We get impatient and not wait on Him. And we see that there's uh, verse number 21. Uh, so then uh, said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus saith unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this. So we see that that uh, Jesus uh, was going to told Martha and Mary that he was going to, that her brother was going to rise again. That he was going to live again. And what a comforting thought that is to us as Christians be able to know that when we see that loved one that's passed away, and that we're going to be able to see them. And uh, I've heard preachers get up, and uh, I've, I've heard a lot of people get up and, and say, well, who's the first person you're going to see when you, when you get to heaven? Uh, of course, uh, it would be to, to meet the Lord Jesus Christ, and, uh, and then uh, because of what he did. Give his life for us. And, uh, and just to see the things that we've seen in our country in the last couple of months with the, uh, the virus, with the protests. And uh, it just seems like you can't turn without anything being bad. And, uh, but we see that uh, he's given us the resurrection and the life through him and that we can get the victory through him and that he'll be honored and glorified and that he can give us that comfort in the things that, that we need to do. He said that your brother is going to rise again in verse 23. And uh, I like what Jesus said in verse 25. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And this is where he had told him that he was never going. That he was going to live and believeth, and was never going to die. And uh, verse twenty-seven, she saith unto him, "Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come to the world." And when she, she had so said, she went her way and called Mary, her sister, secretly, saying, "The Master has come and calleth for thee." So, as we all know. Mary was still sitting in the house. She was waiting. And uh, while this was all going on, in verse 31, and uh, the Jews then which were with her in the house and comforted her when they saw Mary, that she rose up hastily and went out, followed her, saying, She goeth into the grave to weep there. Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, 
she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. And we would have probably said the same thing. Lord, if he'd have been here, uh, maybe uh, he wouldn't have had gone to the hospital. Maybe he wouldn't have had to done this and that. But we, uh, we see that Jesus said in verse 33, When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and, said, um, and was troubled, and said, Where have you laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. And, we, and Jesus wept, because we see that that's what everybody was doing. Mary and Martha were weeping, and they, because, Lord... You should have been here. He's, he's been in the grave four days. Uh, why didn't you come earlier and heal him and, and be, he'd be with us today? But he didn't do that. He did it because it was for his, uh, he was going to glory, magnify the glory of God for him. And we see that Jesus wept. Jesus was, was touched with compassion. And I believe that he's still doing that today that all that people have to do is just ask him to come in into their hearts and save them and uh, that he would give them eternal life. And uh, so we see that Jesus wept in verse 35. Verse 36, Then said the Jews, Behold how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not this mind which man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died? Jesus, therefore, again groaning in himself, come to the grave. It was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Mary, the sister of him that was dead, saying unto them, Lord, by time, this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Jesus said unto her, Say I not unto thee, that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by it, I, by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he had thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus said to him, Loose him and let him go. Now we all know why he just called Lazarus' name. Because if he said, Come forth, then everybody there would, would have come out. And so he was very specific in that Jesus did, or Jesus did call Lazarus to come up out of the grave, and he did. And uh, we're all, we're all going to have seasons of grief, whether it be sickness with sickness, family, jobs, and many more things. The solution for this, as for grief, as we all know, is the Lord Jesus Christ. Always go to Him. We need to know Him in the power of His resurrection. Uh, Philippians 3.10 says, we need to trust Him. Uh, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6, Trust in the Lord with all in thy heart, and lean not unto thy own understanding, and all thy ways acknowledge Him, and he shall direct thy paths. And the Lord gave me a great verse and, uh, that I have read several times, but uh, I just was reminded of this week in the book of Nahum. You never heard any, heard any preaching on the book of Nahum, but he said this in chapter 1 and verse 7, and I like it. He said, He knoweth them that trust in him. Isn't that something? He knoweth us that trust in him. And I like that verse. Nahum chapter 1. Find that real quickly. Uh, but then we need to believe on Christ and thou shalt be saved. We know that. We need to wait upon him. Now what's the, one, of the, one of my favorite verses is Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Uh, I can't remember the rest of it. But that's a great verse. And we need to obey him. His voice we obey. What did Joshua say in uh, Joshua 24, verse 15? As for me and my house, what are we going to do? We're going to serve the Lord. There is victory in him. God makes what? No mistakes. 
He knows what he's doing. And uh, let's turn to uh, Romans chapter 8 real quick. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. We see that the Bible says, and this is a good verse too, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. 32, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how should he not with him also freely give us all things? Verse 35, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or pearl or sword? It is written, for thy sake we were killed all the day long. We were counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Nothing is going to separate us from the love of which Jesus Christ gave us. Let us pray. Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you for your word about grief and that things are done uh, for your honor and glory. And Father, I know that sometimes we as human beings, we think, well, Lord, you ought to have been here yesterday or you ought to have been here today. But Lord, we, we know that everything's for your honor and glory. We just pray now you just meet the needs of each and every person, bless the services to follow, and that your will would be done. We ask these things in your name. Amen.